Hi, I'm Brad Neal, and we are talking about how to use equations. Um, good times. Welcome to discussion. So up at the top, we've got two of our key equations, specifically the speed of light equation and energy of a photon. Yeah, photon. That's what that's supposed to say. If we gave you a question where we said the energy of a photon was equal to this number right here, we could ask you, what is the wavelength of said photon? All right. So this would be a situation of when we diagram these, ask yourself what you're, what you're given and how they relate to one another. We can find the V or the, what is it? The frequency. We can find the frequency. Yep. Um, we actually recording audio. Very good. Um, we can totally find frequency. So one thing, so we could go down here and we could say E equals H, or it's a terrible H, try again. H new divide both sides by H to get new by itself. And we end up with new equals energy divided by Planck's constant because that's what the H is. From there we can plug this into First our equation. yep C equals new times lambda and since we always know the speed of light, that's a constant. We then can figure out our wavelength. So that's like one way we could solve that problem. Um, another way we could solve that problem is pick the right color here. Ooh, let's pick a new color. Um, we could do some substitution. So we could say C is equal to uh, new times lambda. We rearrange and we're going to get C divided by lambda equals new. And then we could plug this stuff into our uh, E equals H new equation. So we'll go out, uh, so we get E equals H, wow, terrible H. E equals H C over lambda. And the purple and the blue are, oh, I'm in the way. The purple and the blue are verbatim, like the exact same. They're going to get the exact same answer. Mm. It just depends on whether or not you like um, using. Uh, equations to keep track of everything like uh, doing substitutions of the equations or just punching numbers continuously in as you go along like the, what's uh, the I'm sorry go ahead what's the unit for frequency yeah so frequency oh come on I've been doing so good with frequency Frequency is going to be that uh, one over seconds, which is equal to seconds raised to the negative first, which is equal to hertz. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, yes, it's helpful to remember. Yeah, so this is going to be this shebang right here. And um, 
I know I sound like a broken record. I get it because I'm tired of saying it too. Um, if you can keep track of your units in this chapter, even if you don't understand what a unit really means, like a jewel, if you don't understand what a jewel means, as long as you can keep track of it and the stuff cancels out when you do the math, um, you're probably going to be fine. Like you can do uh, quantum mechanics as a junior or senior, and you can still get a passing grade. Um, and this is like with a cal like a class that calculus is required. You can get a passing grade in that class just by keeping track of your units. So like if you just get used to it now, like unit tracking, psh. yeah, it'd be nice if you could keep the concept clear in your head too, but realistically. Should um, wavelengths always be in nanometers or does it? All right, that's a great question. Should wavelength always be in nanometers? Where did my cursor go? So wave, let's get rid of that yellow. Yellow is hard to see for old eyes. So, uh, and let's get a new, can I get a new screen? Oh, I should save this. How do I save? Uh, one. <laughs> I can't save to this PC. Are you serious? What ifs? Where can we save this thing? Save. Great. Okay. Um, where am I? Who am I? New. Okay. Um, whoa, come on now. Lambda, is that always equal to nanometers? And the short answer here is no. Lambda needs to start out life in meters, just about 100% of the time. Um, the reason this is, is because of our unit for joules. So joules is going to be, uh, you're going to make me do it. It's like kilograms times times meters squared over seconds squared. And so like we were saying with the whole unit conversion thing um, and c keeping track of canceling stuff, because this is given to you as meters right here, you need to be... Uh, thinking about wavelength in meters first. Now, because of the whole visible light spectrum thing, um, you know, visible light, your ability to see that little thing, um, all of those numbers are between about 200, and, or actually, we'll be fancy and do uh, about 200 nanometers. What? N. Come on, nanometers uh, through uh, about, let's say about 800. It's not exactly 800, but close enough. This is the whole visible light spectrum. This mm -hmm. 200 to 800. Um, that's why nanometers get reported uh, most of the time. The other one that um, you'll see in sometimes in general chemistry, not sometimes, you will see in general chemistry, when we start talking about bond lengths, um, is going to be angstroms. Um, where's my cursor? Uh, and an angstrom is this A with a, like a circle above it. Um, and this is going to be uh, one times... Uh, negative 10 meters, or uh, 10 to the negative 10th meters. So if a nanometer, come on, nanometer is uh, 10 to the negative 9th, an angstrom is 10 to the negative 10th. So bond distances uh, typically are on the angstrom scale. Um, and then so that and that's why uh, some of our kinds of radiation like x-rays um, have the uh, right wavelength to interact with the uh, with atoms better because they're on the proper uh, size scale. 
Okay. So, if I got an answer that was like zero point something nanometers for wavelength, would that be entirely unreasonable? No, it would not be unreasonable to have an answer that was zero point something nanometers. Um, it would be unreasonable if it was saying like red light is zero point something nanometers because red light needs to be in the hundreds of nanometers. So visible light is going to be in this range here. Um, if you're like less than that, that you're going to be in the UV, the X-ray or the gamma radiation range. Okay. And more than that, uh, over on this side, you'd be like IR, so infrared. And this would be UV. Hey, paint's not as bad as I was going to give it uh, junk for. Still not great, but whatevs. We do it live. Let's see here. I'm trying to think because I just posted the quiz. Um, it's going live, like where you can actually take it starting at noon. Um, if you have watched the other videos from class um, for this chapter, we've talked about the concepts that you'll, you'll need and worked, excuse me, example problems as well. So like um, that's another way of saying that well, that's not another way of saying. So we're pretty much done with chapter seven, the atomic structure chapter, um, as far as class is concerned. The periodic trends, there's that uh, discussion sheet that's available uh, on the discussion packet part of the support site. Um, I'm gonna do a couple videos about the generacy and the off bell principle and the Hun's principle for filling orbitals, um, but I think that that's in chapter nine of the book technically really once we hit quantum it all just kind of merges together for me so 